a geologist can determine a rock is more than a billion years old. Band-Aids can be sterilized free of bacteria and viruses after they are packaged. A smoke detector can warn you of the slightest amount of smoke in the air. All of these situations are possible because of nuclear reactions. By the 1930s, a basic picture of the nucleus was set as we know it today. The nucleus is composed of two types of particles, or nucleons, known as protons and neutrons. The number of protons in the nucleus, known as the atomic number, determines what element the atom represents in the periodic table. The atomic number is often denoted by the symbol Z. The total number of protons and neutrons determines the atomic mass number, which is denoted by the symbol A. An element can have different mass numbers, such as carbon-12, 13, and 14. These naturally occurring isotopes of carbon have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. It is sometimes convenient to represent different isotopes of an element using a nuclear notation consisting of the element symbol, with the atomic number as a subscript, and the mass number as a superscript. How many protons and neutrons are there in iodine-131? Correct. There are 53 protons and 78 neutrons. The three isotopes of hydrogen have special names, ordinary hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. A particular isotope of an element is sometimes also referred to as a nuclide. Most isotopes familiar to us in our daily lives are stable. However, some isotopes are unstable. Their nuclei decay spontaneously while emitting energetic particles or rays. These unstable isotopes are called radioisotopes or radionuclides, and the phenomenon of their decay is known as radioactivity. The term radioactivity was coined by Marie Curie shortly after the phenomenon was discovered in 1896 by Henri Becquerel. Early researchers discovered three types of radiation associated with radioactive decay, which they named alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. They determined that alpha and beta radiation could be deflected by charged plates, but gamma radiation was unaffected. Further studies showed that alpha radiation consisted of relatively massive, positively charged particles similar to helium nuclei, with two protons and two neutrons. Beta radiation consisted of negatively charged particles indistinguishable from electrons. Gamma radiation consisted of photons similar to x-rays, but with higher energies. Radionuclides are unstable for several reasons. They have too many total nucleons. They have too many protons. They have too many neutrons, or they have too much energy. A radionuclide with too many nucleons can get rid of four nucleons by emitting an alpha particle. This alpha decay can be illustrated by a nuclear equation showing the parent nuclide and the resulting daughter nuclide. Note that both the number of nucleons and charge are always conserved in a nuclear equation. Also note that for an alpha decay, the mass number of the daughter nuclide is always four less than the parent nuclide. Alpha particles are used by a smoke detector to detect tiny smoke particles. A radioisotope with too many neutrons can reduce that number by one, by emitting a negative beta particle from its nucleus. During this process, a neutron is converted to a proton. Therefore, the atomic number of the daughter nuclide is one greater than that of its parent, although the total number of nucleons remains the same. A radioisotope with too many protons can reduce that number by one by emitting a positive beta particle, known as a positron, from its nucleus. During this process, a proton is converted to a neutron. Therefore, the atomic number of the daughter nuclide is one less than that of its parent, although the total number of nucleons remains the same. Actually, energy and momentum are not conserved in our beta decay equations unless we take into account the emission of another particle called the neutrino. It is much like a photon in that it has no charge, no measurable mass, and travels at the speed of light. Neutrinos came in two varieties, a regular neutrino which is emitted with a positron, 
and an antineutrino, which is emitted with a negative beta particle. Geologists use the beta decay of a radioisotope of rubidium to a stable isotope of strontium to date rocks billions of years old. If a nucleus becomes excited due to an energetic collision, or more commonly, immediately following radioactive decay, it sheds the excess energy by emitting one or more gamma rays. The atomic number and mass of the nucleus do not change as a result of gamma decay. High energy gamma rays from decay of a radioisotope of cobalt are used to sterilize food and medical items. Radionuclides decay randomly, but at a characteristic rate. The decay activity of a radionuclide is expressed as the number of disintegrations per unit time and depends on a constant known as the decay constant. The fraction of a radionuclide remaining after a certain time period is an exponential function of the decay constant and the time. The half-life of a radionuclide is defined as the time it takes for half of the particle amount of the radionuclide to decay. Each radionuclide has a characteristic half-life that may range from a fraction of a second to billions of years. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years, about the age of the Earth. How much uranium-238 was there in the Earth when it was formed? Correct. There was about twice as much uranium-238 when the Earth was formed as there is today.